Hello Aries, welcome to my channel. This is Victoria at Radiant Moon Tarot and we're here doing your weekly reading for November 15th through 21st, 2021. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm truly grateful for each and every one of you. So let's get right into your week ahead. Just a reminder to everybody, these are general readings, so not everything will resonate each time. Take what does, leave the rest behind. If you enjoy the, my readings, please don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel. So let's see what we've got for you. We've got grace and gratitude. Through gratitude, joy expands. And, you know, sometimes we forget to be thankful for the things in our lives, right? Sometimes, you know, life overtakes us. And this is a reminder to take that moment and to give thanks and be, you know, thankful for, you know, even if you're going through, it's hard when you're going through a challenging time, right? To, you know, find the beauty in, uh, you know, in the times of difficulties. But, you know, when we are thankful for the people in our life or for the fact that we have a roof over your head, hopefully you do, um, you know, all of these little things. And it actually raises our vibration when we do that. And we're thankful for the things that we have, for the things that we've gone through, and also for the things that are yet to come. All right, if you're on a manifestation journey, we've got a lunar eclipse that's coming up this week on the 19th, very, very powerful energy. We also have, not only with the lunar eclipse, we have the uh, Jupiter in Aquarius, okay, so uh, some uh, expansion and some luck, sure. Um, some things come to the surface, a great time to let things go, maybe set intentions for manifestation as well, depending on how the moon affects you. And, uh, you know, but we also have uh, maybe things being revealed, secrets being revealed, truth comes to light, some surprises that come along the way as well. All right. And, you know, the thing is, is that if you're on any kind of manifestation journey or a spiritual journey as well, a lot of people are, then we do need to express that gratitude, right? And it does raise our vibration and it just kind of gives us a little bit of a, how should we say, it infuses a little positive vibration into our day. And it can be something as simple as saying thank you to someone that helped you or, you know, when's the last time that you, you know, let's say a friend or a significant other, when's the last time you told them how much you appreciate just them being them? Just thank you for being you, right? And, you know, it's it's amazing the, you know, the energy that comes with that. But also be grateful for yourself as well. Okay, give yourself thanks. Okay, express, express, express gratitude to yourself, right? Give yourself a little pat on the back. We have the grounding energy that's coming here to go deep and explore your roots, all right? So when we get when we need to get grounded, we can connect with ourselves. Like this really does connect with your root chakra. And your root chakra is where you get your get your sense of stability and security. So what where do you plant your roots? What makes you feel safe and secure? All right. Well, as far as energy goes, some of you might be feeling some chaotic energy this week, right? Especially with that uh, with that eclipse. I mean, like full moons aren't bad enough for some people. We got an eclipse on top of that. All right. And so there might be a need there to really ground yourself. Okay. Whether it's doing meditations, connecting with nature, carrying crystals, however it is that you ground yourself, okay, is um, probably necessary in the week ahead, all right? But this is also about exploring what makes you feel secure. And with this uh, eclipse energy, it really does focus on money, your work, your career, your your what you value, all right, your self-worth. And, you know, um, how you make your money. All right. All of those things. And are you on the right path? Right. It gets you kind of questioning a whole bunch of things there. All right. So it's, you know, think about where you plant your roots. And does that make you feel happy? Is that, are you where you want to be? Okay. Because some people are digging up their roots and they're moving on. All right. So let's see what we've got coming for you. We've got the six of wands. That's nice. The Eight of Swords, that's not as nice. <laughs> okay, we've got the Eight of Wands, that's even better. All right, we've got Advice from Spirit, the King of Swords, Blessings headed your way. We've got the Queen of Pentacles, that's very lovely. The energy at the bottom of the deck influencing you for the week ahead. We've got the Hermit. Now, this is actually really interesting because Pisces had the Hermit card at the bottom of the deck. So when we have the energy at the bottom, this is the underlying energy influencing you. 
Okay, so when we have the hermit, okay, this is Virgo energy, but when we have the hermit, this is about quiet contemplation, introspection. There's that grounding energy. The hermit gives you the opportunity or maybe you're feeling the need to take a step back from a situation to think about something. When we go into, think about going into your bat cave, go into hermit mode, right? Sometimes we need to disconnect from the world and it's not because there's nothing necessarily anything wrong, but sometimes we just need that quiet moment, that quiet time. We might need to think about something, contemplate something, you know, think about where we are, where we've been, where we want to go. And we get that opportunity when we go into hermit mode. So it is a solitary energy. It's one of going within, doing that soul searching, thinking about what's important to you and using your internal wisdom, your intuition to help light your way forward, set your intentions. If you're on a manifestation journey, you may be um, you may be using the energy of the moon, especially the eclipse, to manifest some wonderful things into your life. All right, and we go into hermit mode when we do that, okay, because in that lantern that the hermit holds, holds your goals, your dreams, your wishes, your path forward, your soul path forward, right? So some of you aren't quite the journey. The hermit energy is also where we go when we need to heal from something as well, all right? And uh, it does bring about that healing. So again, there might be some... Um, reflection that's going on in the week ahead all right but sometimes those answers you don't need anyone else to tell you what to do those answers that you're looking for lie within and your path forward is yours right and we don't always need anyone else's input for that all right we've got the six of wands all right now the six of wands here's that get her done energy the six of wands brings in a feeling of victory success of accomplishment all right, having your day in the sun, all right, lighting your parade, moving forward, right? You've accomplished a lot. You've overcome challenges and battles, okay? And this is really your time to shine, all right? And, you know, usually the Six of Wands brings in some rewards, some accolades, all right? Um, but it also shows you being really confident in your abilities to accomplish your goals, it is that one of that energy of, I'm not going to let anything hold me back, right? I'm not going to let anything hold me down. This is your time to shine, right? And you might be feeling that. And if you aren't in a place where you can accomplish your goals or you've gone as far as you can go even, right, then maybe you're considering moving forward. But the Six of Wands is one of you know, possibly even being in a spotlight somewhere, right? And uh, you may be contemplating stepping up, stepping up in a work situation, stepping up in a relationship, all right? And, you know, uh, going to the next phase, the next step, the next level in something there. This can, of course, just be a, a spiritual journey for you as well as one of a period of growth, for you also, okay, and overcoming some battles, facing your fears even, okay, or trying to do things a little bit differently, maybe even trying to keep a positive mindset no matter what you do, all right, so it is, it is that one of, yes, I did it, all right, and then we have the eight of swords, <laughs> okay, so we start out great, and then something, you know what, so life is a series of ups and downs, isn't it, and the eight of swords shows that there may be some sort of fear, doubt, or worry that is hindering your progress forward, okay, and we all have those moments, right, just a temporary down patch, because we've got an eight of wands, right, following it, okay, so the eight of swords is quite often a self-imposed restriction, Okay, it's one where we let our fears, our worries, our doubts kind of keep us stuck in one spot. Okay, and because it is swords energy, it's quite often about your thought processes, right? Overthinking, overanalyzing. Eight and the nine of swords are both self-imposed restrictions quite often. All right, so sometimes with the eight of swords, okay, we do need to trust our intuition a little bit. Okay, rather than our brain. Okay, our brain is our brain is a wonderful, powerful tool, but it can also be a big hindrance to ourselves as well. Okay, a hindrance to the energy flow. All right, so there might be something that you need to trust your intuition on and have blind faith. Okay, even faith in yourself as well. But the Eight of Swords sometimes comes out when we've put the blinders on. There's something that we need to see that we can't quite see right now. 
you know you need to go forward, okay, or you believe in the fact that you can accomplish what you set out to do, but the Eight of Swords, there might be something that you're not seeing quite at this time. There in therein steps the Hermit to help help you figure things out, and your advice from Spirit is that King of Swords. All right, we also have a queen of pentacles, okay? So you may need to take a grounded, more logical approach to something in order to see your way forward, okay? Or to find the answer that you're looking for, all right? Something that gets you a little bit unstuck or something that helps you move forward, all right? Um, but the eight of swords can also be that you've got this go-getter kind of energy with the six of wands and the eight of swords can be in um, external influence. The eight of swords is coming out a lot. Okay, the last year, year and a half, right? The eight of swords comes out all the time because even though it's quite often self-imposed restriction, it does come out representing the restrictions that are put in our in our in place in our world that we don't have any control over whatsoever. All right. And so there could be something that you've got this gung ho kind of attitude for, but you've hit a, a little bit of a bump in the road. Okay. You might need to take an alternate approach to something, or it could be that something's taking longer to uh, accomplish than what it normally would because you've got roadblocks in the way. Maybe you need to take an alternate approach. You need to do something differently or just you know, sometimes things just take longer these days, right? People work from home, you know, think of, um, you know, think of if you're trying to open a business, okay? You need to do something as relatively simple as apply for a business permit, okay? You've got the six of wands kind of attitude, like I'm not going to let anything hold you back. And then all of a sudden you have to deal with city hall. And maybe they're short staffed or a permit that would normally take a week to get is now taking two months, all right, that that's that eight of swords restriction. It's not that the path is blocked, okay, it's but it's there's a restriction in place. There's some something that you need to conform to, something's taking longer, something's more difficult than it needs to be, okay, or just it's like that little bit of a think of it as like a little barbed wire fence that's put in your in your path, okay? But it's here you're going to work around it, all right? Because ultimately you've got the 8 of wands. I mean, you do have two 8s coming out in your reading, okay? So 8s represent abundance, all right? But the 8 of wands represents full steam ahead. All right? Um, you know, if you're a if you're like a Star Wars or a Star Trek fan, it's like light speed. All right. And uh, the eight of wands really does show uh, taking action, taking charge. It shows good news coming in as well. All right. So you may have some really good news uh, coming in by the end of the week. Right. So just this little hiccup or a delay. OK. In the middle of the week there. But by the time that your week comes out, comes out, your week plays out. OK. There's this really great communication, a lot of forward momentum, um, maybe even surprises headed your way. OK. Uh, especially with that. Oh, the eight of swords right in the middle of the week. Lunar eclipse. All right. If you are researching manifestation and things like that. OK. Um, most people say set your intentions at the new moon because the new moon is kind of be more peaceful. Okay. More peaceful, kind of calm energy, the full moon and the eclipse, especially bring in a little bit of chaos. Okay. A little bit of, uh, it's like powerful energy. So if you are someone that gets really, really affected by the full moon anyway, Okay, batten down the hatches, all right, because this one's going to be, um, you know, a lot more powerful for you. And if you are in a manifestation journey, if you are someone who feels the energy, who feels as though you need to ground yourself, you feel a little bit chaotic, you're not sleeping, okay, you're emotional, all of these things, then the full moon is not your time to set your intentions, okay? It's time for you to let things go, okay? Um, however, if you are someone that revels in the full moon energy and you like a little bit of chaos in your life and you don't mind surprises and all of these things, then absolutely use this wonderful energy to set your intentions. All right. And the eight of wands is quite often shows up as manifestation. All right. As showing that your intentions that you set out into the universe are about to hit their target. Okay. You're they're on course. Okay. They're on track. All right. So it shows the momentum that's there. OK, so um, if you have set intentions with the new moon that we had in Scorpio on the 4th of November, this is that confirmation that, yep, 
order heard, all right, says the universe, and don't worry, eight of swords, don't worry, we've got your back, we heard what you, we heard your intentions, and we are busy in the background getting things going for you, all right, so stay in the six of wands energy, stay present, stay focused, all right, and be grateful for everything that the universe is sending you, because uh, there's a lot of busy work going on in the background, all right, but ultimately, the Eight of Wands shows you overcoming a hurdle, overcoming a challenge. Um, it brings in this little bit of uh, happiness, okay, and uh, a sense of accomplishment as well, all right? Um, shows that you can accomplish whatever it is that you want, but some good news headed your way, I think, all right? We've got the King of Swords, okay, this is your advice from Spirit. Take a logical approach to things. Trust your intuition. The King of Swords is very much... Um, uh, very highly intuitive energy, very wise. All right. And, you know, this uh, brings in the power of communication, clarity, purpose, okay, strategy, logic, all of those things rule the day. All right. The King of Swords also, you know, as advice says, take charge. All right. If you need to, if you need to say something, say something. If you need to have a uh, communicate, written all sorts of communication. All right. Then communicate, speak your truth, be honest. All right. Don't be afraid to speak up for yourself. All right. Um, but the King of Swords, there may also be, you know, part of your advice from spirit, maybe to seek out some advice. Now, this can be spiritual advice. Um, you know, this can be somebody in your world who is that kind of person that will tell it to you like it is. All right. Will if you ask them for advice, they will give it to you, whether you want to hear it or not. There's someone who is very intelligent, very good with words. Um, someone who is really good at communicating, all right, and, you know, is just really honest and open and truthful, okay? Uh, they may not wear their heart on their sleeves, okay, but they do have a heart of gold, all right? So this may be someone in your life that you can get some sort of advice from. Maybe you even collaborate with somebody, all right? But they'll certainly help you see your way forward, all right? But the King of Swords, there also might be something that you need to research, all right. And if you need to research anything, the King of Swords is really good at that. All right. So it's really good energy coming in here for you to find the answers that you need to see your way forward to sort through, cut through red tape even, but also even to let something go. Face your fears, maybe. All right. Face your fears, let something go, and you will certainly come out on top. The Queen of Pentacles is sent in here as a blessing for you for the week ahead, all right? And the Queen of Pentacles gives you a more practical, solid, grounded approach. Here's your grounding energy, all right? And actually interesting because this is the Shadowscapes Tarot, right? And it shows the Queen of Pentacles attached to a tree, right? And the Queen of Pentacles is very grounded, very much attached to Mother Nature. And here's your tree with the grounding energy, all right? So, you know, so there may be a need to ground yourself in the Queen of Pentacles. That's why this energy is coming in here for you as a blessing, okay? To help you be grounded, help you nurture your goals, your dreams, okay? And move forward on your path to success, all right? Keeping your eye on the prize. The Queen of Pentacles with the King of Swords, again, has you taking a logical, practical, grounded approach to things, all right? And it's almost like keeping you level-headed as well, Okay, uh, sometimes we tend to get carried away. All right, but the Queen of Pentacles is a very wonderful um, energy bringing you success and abundance as well. So abundance, abundance, abundance coming in there. All right, success, success. Okay, a lot of success coming in here as well. All right, so even if it's just going within and finding answers, okay, that is an element of success. Okay. So the Queen of Pentacles can also be somebody in your life as well who may also give you some practical advice, okay? Someone who can help you even achieve your goals. The Queen of Pentacles as a person would be someone very loving, very caring, very patient, very patient, okay? Maybe someone who really loves nature, all right? And, you know, someone who uh, would give you that practical advice that you're looking, that you may need, right? Like just take all the fluff out of something and just help you kind of see, right? So, you know, you may have a couple of people in your life that you can lean on, okay? Or that you may even partner up with. So I'm going to leave that there for you. All right. But I'm going to close out your reading with a monology card and we have meditate and contemplate. All right. New moon energy. This one is Pisces energy. 
All right, but um, you know, when we have the meditate and contemplate, here's your hermit energy coming in here. All right, um, you know, there's your grounding energy that's there, okay? So really think about what you want. If you're feeling scattered, that eight of swords, it, it, you might be feeling really scattered, okay? And, you know, sometimes quiet contemplation, meditation will really get you back to center, all right? So it's like spirit really wants to keep you grounded and focused throughout this throughout this week ahead, Okay, and you know, have you take your time on something we can sometimes get carried away or get impatient, right? And so spirit's really trying to keep you balanced, keep you grounded, keep you focused, okay, and uh, helping you, um, you know, uh, think about what is really important for you and helping you move forward to achieve your goals. I'm going to leave that there for you guys. All right. So I hope there was something in this reading that resonated in some way. If there was, please like and subscribe. Um, I hope you guys have a great week. Um, I hope you have a great day. Happy Lunar Eclipse. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.